infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, our rehab facility in Haskell, New Jersey, has been in the news cycle for the past week or so, as they deal with a pretty serious adenovirus outbreak. To date, 26 cases have been reported, primarily pediatric patients, and nine have died. So what is adenovirus, and why the high percentage of deaths in this outbreak? Well, joining me to answer these questions is Amesh Adalja, MD. Dr. Adalja is a senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins University Center for Health Security. Dr. Adalja, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. You bet. So what are adenoviruses and how common are they? Adenoviruses are very common viruses that usually cause infections like the common cold, pink eye, sometimes urinary tract infections, sometimes GI infections, and they're very common. They're ubiquitous. Almost every adult has been infected with multiple adenoviruses uh, throughout their lifespan. Okay. And are they frequently found in outbreak situations? Yeah, adenoviruses can cause outbreaks, and it's actually notorious for doing that in in military barracks, for example, and that's a place where we use adenovirus vaccines because the military was aware in their training camps that adenovirus outbreaks could be pretty severe. So this is something that can flare up in outbreak situations. Uh, It's not usually this fatal, but it isn't unknown for it to be as fatal as as has occurred in New Jersey. Yeah. And how does someone contract it? Like I said, this is a common cold type of virus, so people get it through respiratory secretions, through saliva, uh, basically uh, the same way you get the common cold, and and that's why it is so prolific when you have an adenovirus outbreak, that it's very hard to avoid catching it because it spreads very casually through respiratory droplets, and that's why when you have these outbreaks, it's really important to do infection control, hand washing, isolation of patients. Now, it is typically a mild illness, but... um... As of the latest reports from the New Jersey Department of Health, nine kids have died. That's about one-third of those infected in this outbreak. Dr. Adalja, why the high fatality rate in this outbreak? Is it linked to the particular strain, or is it the health condition of the children, or some combination? It's really a combination. So let's start first with the people that are dying. And what we have here is a a long-term rehabilitation facility for children with chronic medical conditions. And when you look at the cases, they're really occurring in patients that are on mechanical ventilators so that they already have respiratory compromise. So if you get a a respiratory virus in somebody that's on a ventilator, for example, you have a very small reserve. And what's probably happening is these patients are contract getting pneumonia and being unable to oxygenate themselves. So this these aren't normal hosts. They are compromised hosts. And we do know that adenovirus can be particularly deadly in anybody that has a pre-existing medical condition like immunocompromised state, bone marrow patients, people on ventilators. So that's one factor. The other factor is is that we do know that adenovirus 7 is one of the strains of the virus that is known to cause outbreaks and sometimes fatal outbreaks. There have been cases of adenovirus 7 causing outbreaks in neonatal units in the past, and there are lots of reports of adenovirus 7 being a particularly virulent strains of the adenovirus, and it's actually one of the ones that's in the military vaccine is adenovirus 7, so it is something that's well recognized. So it's likely a combination of the strain as well as the individuals who are being infected in this long-term nursing home. Sure. Um, And there's really no specific treatment for this. Right. There are some antivirals that we use in very limited situations, sometimes in bone marrow patients, but they are very toxic and they don't necessarily always work, so there is no standard treatment. It's mostly supportive care. There are some antivirals in development that might have some have some uh, benefit, but we're not quite there yet. So this is all just supportive care when someone gets an adenovirus infection. Mm-hmm. And finally, um, you kind of touched on this already. Um, any recommendations concerning prevention? The best things you can do is really to isolate the patients that have adenovirus, make sure you're doing meticulous infection control, hand washing uh, among the staff members. Also, you often put these patients in droplet precautions so that people who are seeing them are, put, are putting on surgical masks so that they don't contract it. But what we're already hearing is that this nursing home 
had problems with hand washing in that they had no means to isolate these patients as well. So that may explain the, the spread of this, why mm-hmm. there's 26 cases, uh, because there was lack of infection control. And we do know that nursing homes in general tend to be a weak link in our infection control chain and often can be uh, major centers for infectious disease spread. Very good. Very informative. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amesh Adalja, for your time and your expertise. I appreciate it. Thanks.